Good evening. My name is Yolanda Sanders, and I am the department chair for apparel events and hospitality management at Iowa State University. It is my pleasure to kick off season two of More Than Monoliths. Um, I am excited to have two artists um, here this evening that will be um, having a dialogue about their work. This is an excellent way for us to end um, Black History Month and, and kick off the remainder of um, season two of More Than Monoliths. So uh, we'll start off with um, Daniel Williams, who is an artist born and raised in South Birmingham, Alabama, to be exact. His passion for art blossomed as he observed his eldest brother bringing home his art projects from his high school art class. From there, he went to pursue art and art alone. He graduated from the University of Alabama, Birmingham with the Bachelor's of Fine Arts in Art and with a concentration in printmaking and also with an art history minor. Daniel's focus is on the Black experience as seen through his pop art eyes. His art is heavily inspired by pop art and execution, including wonderful colors, sharp lines, and the use of half tones. He can also credit his aesthetic to the cartoons, anime, and manga that he has consumed throughout his life. His work varies from classic portrait work all the way to character designs for Four Strikes, a manga that he is editor. Welcome, Daniel Williams. Hey. Hi, so wonderful to have you joining us from um, Birmingham. Uh, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. Uh, this evening, we have Cameron Gray, who is also a Birmingham-born artist who works, whose work focuses on Blackness in America. He uses his work to help decipher his own understandings of self. He believes that Blackness is a universal force. He tries to reveal a small part of his story through every object he creates. Through his art artistic and social practice, he hopes to be a reminder to people of how we got here and with the intention to spark inspiration and Black futures. Gray founded the Buxton Initiative in 2020, which is an organization that centers Blackness in the realm of art, music, literature, and film. In 2021, he was the recipient of the Iowa American Rescue Plan grant and the Iowa Arts Count, sorry, um, um, the Iowa Arts and Cultural Resilience Grant. Please help me welcome Cameron Gray, who will lead the discussion this evening with Daniel Williams. Hey, y'all. Uh, uh, yeah, no, thank you. Thank you, Yolanda, for those those great introductions. Um, yeah, what up, boy? How you doing? What up, man? How you doing, bro? I'm doing, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. No, no, it's, 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 first off, I want to thank you for agreeing to be a part of this uh, second season. Um, and you know we we've been to, even for as long as I've known you we've always talked about either working or doing something together, right. or finding ways that we can collaborate with one another. And so, as soon as I knew that there was going to be a second season of the, of this, I already knew exactly who I wanted to be a part of it. So oh my God, uh, no, yeah, no, thank you, for, thank you for that, man. It really means a lot to me. Uh, man, thank you for having having no, me, bro. No, of course. So how how, how you been? Uh, I've been good, man. I've been great. Yeah. Great, man. Like, uh, I just wanted to say this before we get started, man. Like, I think I like your introduction better than mine. Like, I'm going to have to steal some of them words you got going on. <laughs> I, I, I did just update it because I was I was looking at my old one and it didn't feel like it. It just, it, it just sounded too, it sounded too regimented. So I wanted I feel to, but um, that's so funny. But, uh, <laughs> but no, man. Um, no, so like, uh now so like let me ask you this um 
can you, can you give everyone here who who doesn't know you specifically to give them a little information about yourself? Uh, okay. Well, I'm Daniel Williams, I guess, aka the Will Summer. Like that's that's my handle on pretty much everything. Um, like Miss Doctor Sanders said, I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, born and raised here. Um, I've been doing art for for as long as I can remember, for real. Like maybe not on a scale, but like I'm always putting something to, to paper, pen to pad, ink to pad, etc. You know. Um, uh, and right now, man, I'm just out here pursuing art, just. Just keep 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 hustling with this art stuff. For sure. So, how would you describe the art scene in in Alabama right now? In Alabama, man. From the people I mess with, like and see that their work is is always great, man. Like it's it's, it's really up and coming too. Like um, it's a lot of galleries popping up around town, even in like the black 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 parts of town too. So. We getting representation in gallery spaces as well. Yep. Like and, and and too like uh, the next two artists you gonna have on too like their art is is really good. Like I really I really inspire. Like I really look to them for inspiration. No, I mean I think that's that's something that I I, I personally look to all three of you as as big inspirations for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, because it, it just it just makes uh it just makes um for for me it is one of those things of where it it it, it makes me feel uh it's like oh the hometown is represented and it's cool to see uh, yeah, facts. in themselves uh with, with within uh the confines of through Birmingham and so like that's like the one thing that like even though I left like I've been trying to find ways of getting back you know what I mean it's like mm -hmm. how can I bring some of the stuff that I've been working on and, and bring it back into into the uh into the fold if you will um so like let's start let's start with uh your your influences can you can you tell me some of the the your biggest influences that you have oh man my influences go all over the place really um uh, uh, let's see. I guess my biggest influence would be um, the anime, manga, and the cartoons that I grew up on. Like, um, and there, the lack thereof of black representation within those. You know, like um, um, we gravitate towards like the the. the the little black characters they they do they did they did this back in the day man we we owe we old school man like you gotta remember that it's yeah. old heads. but uh back in the day where it's, it's maybe one black character every 10 shows or whatnot and that one character could be like a extreme caricature which is like one one very cool but it's the only thing we did have like that was one of my major influences because it's it's always I always strive for that representation and kind of like all spaces of art, you know, like sure. like our voice, like you said, like in your intro, that's that's why I'm just, I was over here like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that, that representation, man, is, is just needed and like all all kind of like all walks of life now, like because we we are coming in in like in all the folds of life we slowly but surely creeping up in it um and also my influence is like um pop art in general like um just the colors the colors used it was always just super super primary colors as you can see in my work it's always like a yellow rgb you know uh cmyk those basic colors but you know just just keep that pattern on and on it's, it's it's very pleasing to the eyes just because it's, it's you know the primary colors and also let's see do i have any more influences i i guess just black culture in general like um uh, I, I believe myself that my art speaks for like just black culture in general not not just just me 
per se, but I, when I, some of my bigger pieces, they, um, I try to tend them to be voiceless on my end, but like very, you know, very loud, just w without my presence, you know what I'm saying? No, for sure. No, I mean, like, I, I remember seeing your first, like, I think, um, because like we when we first met, it was printmaking the the main basis behind both of our art. Yeah. It's like, I yeah I knew you as a printmaker first. I didn't know you as 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 a as a, a, like I I don't remember seeing many of your your paintings per se. It was mm -hmm. a lot of print work that you were doing. Um, and so like I remember the first time like and so like even seeing your first black black uh black um Batman yeah where you're like referencing where you're referencing like old school painting within that same aspect of it so like can you yeah. talk can you talk a little bit about how you're even though you are using and like kind of making an amalgamation of like you know comics but then also painting too how, how, how does that fall into play too like how what what big is it like what things are you looking at within like european painting that you do see creep up into your work now mm, that that specifically that that style I was going for specifically was uh also centered around the medium more so than just the um just the art itself like um because um printmaking was very important to like the spread of probably most religions but I know for a fact it was important for the spread of Christianity so like that that kind of like just connected it to to me from like just a general purpose um but also within that art is is uh i'm trying to find the white word the right word for it it's almost pretentious that's the right word for it. it's almost pretentious how they um they um paraded about like um like uh skill wise like it's hmm. I can't explain this right now, but we'll get back to it. But uh, we can still get into the um, uh, the link between those two because, um, like I was saying, it's the link between printmaking and Christianity, and those artworks came forth because of that. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. No, I mean, like it. it it's just funny to see like the progression of those amalgamations of like talking about printmaking, but then also talking about how you're molding and, and at the beginning, like it was just cool to see the beginning of that with mm -hmm. them. Cause, cause that was the first time you started playing around with those, those different types of uh, uh, putting black characters into like normally comic or comic or, you know, anime roles. Right. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't want to say that was the first, but like I think on the scale as fine art, I think that was the first time I explored that idea on a fine art scale. Like on a, on a more okay, on a more, more refined, more more you know I'm you know skill based. It take it take time to develop the ideas, you know, breathe out like you know. You are you you know you know you print making you got it. Uh, no, um, that's really funny. Uh, so let me ask you this: uh, you, you said that uh, when you were younger, your brother would bring bring home, like, would he bring home drawings or what would he bring home? Uh, he he bring home drawings. It was just like high high school. Just imagine your high school. Um, art class it would be drawings watercolors you know some paintings uh, just stuff like that yeah and so then when that when that was taking place and like you you kind of made that decision of like wanting to go through to the art route no nah, I, I i think that decision was made like before i could could make that decision you get what i'm saying like uh um I was, I would draw and just do art, but it wasn't like a conscious thing in my mind. It's just, oh, uh, I'm gonna do art, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it was built within you. To some yeah. Point. So like when you, when your folks knew that that's kind of what the, the path you must you were going to take, did you mm -hmm. have to convince them that this is the path of like, can you talk a little bit? Because like, I know 
for me personally, it, it was it took a lot of convincing of my folks of like this is uh-huh. the, like I'm, I'm gonna make it. Things are working out, and so like, can you talk a little bit about how did you convince? Because black parents aren't, you know, it's not like yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get what you're saying, like a uh, ton, but but I don't think it was that difficult for me to convince my parents because just one thing, I'm I'm the baby out of the out, out of my brothers, so it's like. They, they kind of babied me, I guess, but it was still like, um, uh, they they accepted it. Like, they used to buy me like uh, art supplies all the time. So it's, it's kind of their fault. So <laughs> it's on yeah. them, dog. Elvis, yeah. <laughs> Y'all made me choose this. Like, it wasn't <laughs> me who did it. Um, yeah. No, that's, that's really beautiful. Um, so, like, uh, looking at a, a lot of uh, the color choices and what you're choosing currently with a lot of your work Mm -hmm. I mean even the piece that I'm seeing behind you there's a lot of pinks and and you know golds and yellows so like how are you making those decisions color wise of like with what colors because I don't I don't know many of the drawings and uh, drawings and paintings that I've seen of yours as of late that have had any different like a different color scheme beyond Mm -hmm. those beautiful you know pristine pinks and somewhat whites and, and, and golds. Yeah. Um it kind of go back to my influence, my influences and that color scheme that CMYK is is like it's it's such a uh in your face color scheme. It's such a pop art color scheme where it's like you can use maybe three out of the four, two out of the four, or you know, just and different variations if you get the tone of it right it is it they just pop so uh it's all about repetition with me is is the ideas they get bigger uh more detailed more involved as i go along like uh one piece uh you can see you may be able to see the separations between the pinks going down the gradation and the next and the next one you may it's like i completely do away with that the whole gradation and it's more a, a smooth surface yeah. so it's it's like you were saying earlier it's like it's always an evolving thing but the repetition is with the colors like so you see those colors and they and they remind you of my artwork right yeah so it's almost like using it as almost like a staple or or a, or a signature if you will yeah facts yeah so like, uh, so do you see yourself moving beyond that color palette, or do you, or you think you'll just stick with it? Yeah, I can. Uh, I do actually see myself moving along, but uh, for right now, that's like the thing I got right now. So you know, yeah, I'm gonna use that up. No, I mean like, I, no, I, I, you, you, you got to use whatever you have essentially. Uh, nah, thanks. It's really, was really funny, but like, so like, let, let me ask you this. Uh, what what was the first anime that you saw personally that you felt very akin to? <laughs> oh man, this is gonna be a trip, bro. Uh, it was back in the day, and I used to wake up before school just to watch this joint, bro. It's called Samurai Pizza Cats, bro. Okay. What's what's that? What is that about? It's about some these ninja slash samurai pizza i mean cats that like deliver pizza or something it's been a while so that's crazy yeah bro that's so funny so what what attracted is it just the hilarious aspect of it or is there anything within it or, or even the artwork of it like were you attracted by, by the way that mm, it, was, it was definitely the artwork bro like just just thinking like most kids back then, it wasn't like anime all over the place. So that style of artwork, like in any instance, is easily is instantly recognizable. Like it's different from what we we're used to. So that was pretty much how it went for real. But like, and you know how anime goes, where it actually builds upon like character and stuff like that in a in a kind of arc or whatever. And like, I think that was present too. I think don't hold me to it. It's it's been a minute since I watched that. No, for sure. Um, I feel like I feel like I should. I'm gonna allow you to, even though I don't want to do this, but I'm. Oh, I, I want you to talk about 
your love of One Piece, please. <laughs> oh my god i want to give you the platform to talk about your love of and Can and you. like honestly i want you to talk about it in the way that um in the way that um story-wise and like is there any relation to the way y'all doing four strike and we we can talk oh. about four strikes we'll talk about four strikes after you answer this question but because I don't, the people don't know what that is. But I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. I'll fill them okay. in after this. But like, yeah, talk, talk. Go yeah, ahead. We got, we got to get you to watch, uh, watch slash read One Piece, man. You gotta, you gotta uh, jump on in here, bro. Like I'm telling you, I like, oh, I'm telling you, man. Like first of all, Oda is the goat. We trying to aspire to be like him <laughs> one day. Uh, that's the author of One Piece. Um, I don't know, man. It's just a, it's it's strange. Like uh, I've watched, read a lot of manga, anime in my life, but like this one, it just it just feels different, bro. Like um, the stories he has woven together throughout the whole run, like stuff that happened that that happened in like maybe the earlier chapters is is actually re- like being solved like now in the later chapters yeah. and it's all in like this cohesive thing uh and he uh, I, it's kind of hard to talk about it without spoiling it a lot but uh another thing is his his um roster of characters is 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 mind-boggling really like um you can watch the show or read the manga and the main characters could could not be uh, hold up, let me see how I phrase it. The main characters of the show, well, you have a chance of your favorite character could be not in the main character's cast. If you get what I'm saying? Like, uh, there are several characters in there that that a lot of people will gravitate towards. Like, his design for characters is amazing, too. So, like, using that as, the, as some of the basis can you talk about Four Strikes a little bit for me? First off, I want you to give, give everyone an introduction of what Four Strikes is, and then we'll go into it a little bit deeper. Uh, Four Strikes is a manga that me and my friend, my great friend, Blake Showers, uh, work on. We've been working on Four Strikes for, I don't know, bro. Like, it's been a long time, man, but uh, we are being published inside of Saturday AM inside of their saturday pm uh manga block and they we have a, a amazing lineup of manga there uh i think we come out every every quarter mm-hmm. every quarter we come out with a uh, chapter how many chapters are y'all into right now uh that's a good question we might be into seven or eight uh, i don't know like i just got the um the i don't know the right term for this the right uh actual comic book term but the the pages to edit for the next release like uh yesterday so chef kiss no i i'm i'm excited it's, it's really cool and i you know uh spoiler alert Blake will be on next month, which I'm, you know, I'm sure I could, <laughs> we could dive a little bit deeper into it with him. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hold myself off from like just talking about him and yeah. his art and stuff. A hundred percent. But like, um, so like, let me, let me ask you this. How mm-hmm. much uh, input do you have on the actual creation of it? Like, are y'all like one-to-one or, or how's that partnership? It's it's pretty one to one actually. Um, like story wise, um, uh, content wise, the only thing that uh, he has free uh, I don't want to say free reign, but uh, no, I don't want to say the only thing, but because it makes it sound like uh, yeah, that's what he do. But uh, what he does is like um, we go over like a very rough um, overview of the chapters, and he pretty much just draws it out. And he shoots it at me, and I edit it. Like, I think that's the only thing he does independently. But throughout um, the story-wise, character-wise, um, it's pretty much one-to-one now. 
like in, definitely in the beginning it was definitely his story from the beginning like he created this but i jumped on for the ride but here we are no i'm I'm pretty like it's it's, it's beautiful to see the progression of that of, of that uh of y'all story and i need to read it myself uh because i need to get uh that saturday p.m um app, that app. Check yeah um check it out man no i, I need to no, no no i gotta support the homies um for sure um yes, so like let me ask you so then kind of going back into what we were talking about one piece how much is one piece can you see elements of one piece coming into four strikes or did you kind of like are you what what are y'all using y'all's basis on the creation of this mm, uh, uh i don't i i definitely think uh it would be very hard for me not to, you know, his Oda's influence to be on any type of manga writing or uh, comic writing that I would do personally. Like his influence is definitely heavy handed there, which which is a uh, very tight continuity, um, very, you know, foreshadowing elements that, you know, may or may not come in the future, stuff like that, where there's a legit payoff for readers from reading it from the start to the um, to the end. Um, I would say in the elements, uh, it's it's all Blake for real, for real, to tell you the truth. Like um, on the elements of each the each layout of the um, each release, yeah. I would say that. But uh, story wise, I would say that's just me and Blake for real, for real. Like we we. We definitely, um, I don't want to say borrow, but we definitely are influenced by the manga creators that we, we read. Like, it's, it's heavily influenced by the stuff that we read. Like, I'm, I'm sure Blake will tip you in on some stuff. You know, so I'll, I'll leave that for him to say about it. I, I know some of the influences that he puts into it. So I'll leave that for y'all conversation. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, like, it's just a, it's, it's a, it's a beautiful, I mean, every single time I see things from it, or you show me stuff, it's just really cool to see, like, again, talking about what we were talking about before, the lack of representation within, yeah, the, the into, but then, like, um, and then, like, actually saying, okay, I, I, I recognize that there is a lack of representation in this particular field, and we want to be mm-hmm. the to change that. How does that make you feel of, like, knowing that you are you are jumping into something, you know, you are doing, making the work, if you will, or doing the work to, to, to almost, you know, begin other people or and somewhat influence in other people to do more, mm-hmm. uh, more manga based, but then bring the African American uh, characters into their work. How does that make you feel? Well, great, really. Um, Cause that's always, that was definitely one of our goals setting off was just to, to bring that eye to representation to uh, actually bring like um, black culture to that space in general, not just a black character, but you know our culture, uh, the way we talk, our slang, uh, the way our friendship groups work, um, just just stuff like that. Um, but the one thing I always admire Blake for and um, and this whole four star thing is like that's not the only representation uh, he he wanted, you know, like he wanted to re- represent represent like communities from all walks of, walks of life. So I was like, yeah, bro, like that's some that's some real stuff right there. Yeah, because I mean, like if you if if we think about it, it's it's, it's very you don't you're, you're right. You don't get to see that that many people represent like even like. You know, sexual orientation or or any yeah. degree of being represented within the the field of manga, or and and, and anime in itself. Um, mm-hmm. Which again, a, another thing I commend both of you on doing. Like, I think that's huge. Um, I can't give you enough props enough uh, on the work in which y'all are, are placing. Um, I know. So thank like, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, of course, of course, of course. So can we? So I think that like. What what is the aspirations of Force Strike, or what do y'all see, or what do y'all want it to be? 
Man, to tell you the truth, bro, we want that thing to be big, bro. Like, like you brought up one piece. Like from the goal, the track that that on has. I mean, from not from the goal, but from the start of four strike, the track that one piece is on has kind of been like our goal. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like a multimedia uh, thing, where it's like they got shoe deals with big shoe companies. They got video games. They got movies. They got clothing, plushies, stuff like that, man. Like we. And they definitely publishing books and whatnot, stuff like that, man. We wanna, we want four strikes to be really big, bro. Like, and and I think we think that it does definitely has the potential to be. Yeah, yeah, I I, I agree with you. Like, I think you, again, y'all make a lot of good headway, um, and even like having that that even being connected with, you know, uh, Saturday morning PM. Uh, even helps you know bring your, your work to a different audience or a bigger yeah. audience. Yeah, thanks. Because they are the the most diverse manga group out there. Like they got books about everybody, bro. Like they really doing it. Like they pushing diversity in their field. Like and that was definitely a a huge part of us joining them. Like we we were definitely shopping around and see which. Um, which direction we should be going in. And that definitely helped us in deciding like, oh, they pushing diversity already? And that's what we all about. Yeah, for sure. Facts. Cause that's, that's, a, that's a black owned. That's yeah. Black-owned. Yeah, that's what I thought. Fred um, the guy. That's crazy. That is, it's, it's, it's beautiful to see that work, you know, getting getting is just due, but in a, but not only getting is just due, but it's getting, it's, it's been placed in a, in a space of where it's supposed to thrive and and they're doing everything to help you guys thrive. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. and and, and pushing that work further than you could even perceive, you know, Um, which is amazing. Uh, There was a, what was I going to ask you? There was a, um, uh, dang. Um, So like even thinking about, um, Oh, I got it. What are, what do you think? So when you think when you think about where your work is going and like kind of uh, the, the the realm in which you're working right now, do you mm-hmm. do you know where you want to go next, or are you kind of just open and like allowing yourself to or allowing the world to help you dictate what you want to talk about or or what you want to draw or stuff to that degree. Hmm. I usually let the world kind of dictate, but even still, I have my series that I, I, I keep going that that occupy space in my my head like like at all times. But um on a grander scale, I do kind of let the world dictate like uh what what I pursue in my artwork, where it is. But with that said, it's it's I try to stray away from images of you know um african americans being put in position of uh of struggle i guess you can say well like most of my artwork i guess even with like with the pop art side of it it's more you know um friendly i guess you can say uh more happy you know the more happier aspects of the black culture um, not to say that um, we shouldn't, you know, showcase that stuff, but like, it's just it's just hard for me to stomach sometimes. No, I mean, like it 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 is uh, to, to dwell on that, but then also to like make work about that kind of struggle too mm-hmm. can can really mess with your mental sanity and your mental health too as well. And so, like, I totally respect you and 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 commend you on understanding that about yourself and and just leaning into the the aspect of black joy too as mm-hmm. well um because i think there is a lot of joy within the work that you create um though like you do there there are moments like i, I remember seeing the miles morales uh piece yeah. that, of where you did have you know hands up hand, you know the hands up sign uh too so like you, you do have that political but i, I think also yeah like like i was saying like that's as more of the times it's like 
I think uh, it was it was a police shooting that week when I made that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I do have those moments where like that weight, it, you know, it, it breaks it, and I I got to put some pen to paper on it. You know? Sure. Um, so how do you protect yourself in in those aspects of like, I, I guess. Yeah, how do you protect yourself in, in those in those aspects? Because I think it's really hard, especially with the way the media is, to like kind of onslaught this this aspect of like mm-hmm. black death and like that always being the tagline of people on every single news station. So like, what do you do personally to protect yourself from from all that kind of stuff? Mm, I don't want to say I protect myself from. It. I still consume it. Like it's it's hard not to consume it and it's i think it's foolish to even try not to consume it as a african-american in uh in the united states an african-american in the, in the south uh it's 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 news that i need to consume because i need to be aware of you know what's going on for sure and especially you know like in the realm of our uh the pol- the polit politics of our culture for sure no 100 percent. so like so maybe the way not so maybe not protect yourself but then like how do you make sure that you are okay you know what i mean like how are you check all right, oh, do you like check in with somebody or do you know is there do you, i mean I, I don't i don't think we've ever had this conversation but like do you go to therapy or anything to that degree of like just mm-hmm. making sure that you straight yeah you <laughs> straight bro I, uh i don't know man like that's a that's a you know deep question right there, but um, I think I just got it in me, bro. Like I just settle myself sometimes, you know, just just chill and do some artwork for real. Like I think doing artwork about the, the way I do, approach artwork uh, kind of helps me in in that realm a lot too. Yeah, I mean, like it, it, it like it, it, it's almost like having a journal. Would you, I mean, like, would you say that? Like, it's almost like having a journal without having a journal type deal? Yeah, it, it is, bro. Like, um, I can tell you a lot about, like, situations that happen, um, like, in the weeks or the months of creating a piece, even though the piece may be, like, a couple of years old or whatnot, just by looking at the piece, you know? Yeah, for sure. Because you can almost, you if you look at your brush strokes or, or the, the line weight and what you're putting something down, I think that mm-hmm. that's bended high to exactly what your mental state and what you were going through through that time to do as well. Mm-hmm. Would, you agree, would you agree with that? Yeah, facts. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, so, like, uh, so let's talk about Birmingham for a second. And mm-hmm. Yeah, I know, exactly. Why, why, tell the people why Birmingham is so special. Man, Birmingham is special because we have talent on talent on talent on talent on talent bro like that's one of the craziest things to me about Birmingham is just like the people just the people I know or or pretty much the most talented people like in Birmingham you know what I'm saying like and I don't want to say the circle is small because it's a lot of it It's, it's, it's a very broad circle of just talented people whereas rappers painters um, musicians, singers, cooks, uh, bartenders, j- just everything. Just it's it's dope down here, bro. Real talk. No, I, look, I try to come back as often as I can. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is, Ken. Uh, no, one hundred percent. Like, and like, while while we're on the the mode, I think we should give our boy a shout out to Cam, another camera uh, for your shirt, ill status. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, like, you know, you always got to support the whole team, man. And so, like, I think facts, that's, facts. I think that's, like, I think when I think about Birmingham and what it means to me and, like, even the artists that I've been seeing around mm-hmm. there, it's like, I think we're built different to some degree of where, like... Uh, facts, I agree. The, the hustle mentality of coming from Birmingham, because, again, when we think about, I think, every time I think about that being from there, it's always looked down upon. It's not in Atlanta. It's not like, mm-hmm. a, you know, mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's always like, I always feel like we're Atlanta's little brother. <laughs> yeah. I feel, or little sibling. And, uh-huh. but because of that, I think it forces you to 
go get it even harder than any other mm-hmm. one. You don't have that easy fact, fact. To, I think uh, I think speaking of that, it's just like I think a lot of people want to rep like actually Birmingham, bro. Like I don't want to go nowhere else, bro. I want to put Birmingham on the map, bro. Like I think that's a, a issue. I don't want to say issue, but like a very common thought pattern with a lot of artists or a lot of artisans in Birmingham. Say in the aspect of people not claiming that's where they from. No, in the aspect of people claiming, like, I think a lot of people do claim and they want to actually put Birmingham on the map because they, like, like they're not crazy, bro. Like, they like me, man. They they see the other people around them, bro. Like, they know how talented, like, these people are. It's not it's not a fluke, bro. Like, it, and, it's, and it's very weird to me sometimes where it's, like, do, it's, do are other people circle like this talented in like all these aspects of life, bro? Like, I don't, I don't know. Uh, look, I, I, I don't know either. And like, <laughs> that's the that's the funny part about it is like, for me, uh, and that's the main reason why I wanted this season to be my home is because like this is this is where if it wasn't for Birmingham or it wasn't for the creators in which I'm featuring this this season. I wouldn't be the artist or half the artist that I am today. Mm -hmm. And so if it wasn't for Birmingham and to have a, a a center of not only like black creators too, like having you, Andrew, uh, Cam, and like y'all help me as as even a creator find my own niche, especially coming from art programs that we all came from. There Mm -hmm. wasn't many, of us in those places either facts yeah bro <laughs> and so like got about that yeah oh you can't forget about it it's hard not to <laughs> God, it was so long ago it was I, so it, long I, ago you ain't never lie it's like i mean like because you graduated my knees my knees <laughs> then we're not gonna talk about that we're not gonna talk <laughs> but like no but like it, what was cool about and what i appreciate about having friendships or art art friendships as we do is that we have always championed each other through oh, anything facts, that facts. we've ever done and like always heavily supported one another too. Mm-hmm. And like if I ever needed something or wanted to talk to anybody about the, the creative process or like even the stuff that I'm working on, I could always mm-hmm. I could always come to y'all because first off, not only do y'all have the the knowledge and know how to to how best to go about it but (coughs) excuse me but you all always kept it real with me and never you never would lie because you want me to succeed as well and so i'm Mm -hmm. ever grateful for all of you and the things that y'all done for me personally and you know that's the reason why i invited you to be on this because i wanted to give 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 it back you know what i mean like i wanted to show you my own appreciation through any way that I can. So yeah, you know I appreciate it, my guy. One hundred. No, no, I am, I am forever grateful. Um, I want to, uh, cause I think we got like fifteen minutes left, and I want to make sure. Uh, Yolanda, um, do we have any questions in the chat or anything like that? No, we don't have any questions in the chat. Okay. Um. <laughs> Well, uh, all right. Well, in that case, um, let me, <laughs> let me, uh, so Dan, Dan, another question I want to ask you. I guess we should have said something about <laughs> some questions. I mean, well, I mean, usually people will always like make comments or something to that degree, but oh, okay. it is what it is. Um, one thing that, I, yeah, whatever. It's okay. It just gives us more time for us to talk. Uh, um, one thing I was gonna ask. Someone's typing a question. Okay. Oh, it's it's it's, it's my girl Jill. But before she gets her question, let me ask you this: What are you What are you currently looking at or currently watching right now? You know, you you already know that one piece. I know. Okay, <laughs> give me. Some uh i am currently i'm actually watching ducktales like they remade it not too long ago i know i started um, long ago too 
Yeah, um, that's pretty cool. Uh, what else am I watching? A lot of NBA action going on. Go Mavs. Wait, wait. Uh, Is the season almost over with? Uh, they got my like twenty some more games until the playoffs. Okay. So yeah, we got we got we got a minute. Yeah. Mm, what else am I watching? Uh, I don't know. Random YouTube videos. Uh, Iron Chef. They be uh they be uh, going in on Saturdays, bro. Like nothing but Iron Chef be on, bro. So sick. <laughs> uh, did you so let me ask you well we did talk about this but now you talking about the NBA can you talk about how like sports culture is influenced you too as well uh yeah uh, a lot of people don't know uh the sports side of my life like uh, I've been playing basketball since I was pretty much the same amount of time I've been doing art bro to tell you the truth um uh and my brother um my eldest brother, he was a professional player. He played overseas uh, for a couple of years. Um, and all that just inspired, like, it, it's it's almost just as much as the inspiration as um, anime, manga, and all the other stuff in my artwork. Yeah, no, no. And do you think it's also this notion of, like, because this is something, like, as, as being another sports dude who played sports since they were a kid, Mm-hmm. I, I think there is, I mean, do you consider yourself somewhat braggadocious in the way that you talk about your stuff? Not at all, bro. Like, if if you, uh, most people would, would tell you I'm probably like the humblest guy out there, bro. Like, yeah. like even, even like, uh, I was giggling, like, kind of being, like, shy when she was reading the bio that I wrote. So it's just like... Did I sound like that? That sounds kind of braggadocious to me, you know. Like I'm, I'm very not a very brag. Like I don't brag a lot about my art, but when we get on the court, though, I'm like, uh, uh, cross you up, Cam. <laughs> <laughs> we still need to go hoop together, but uh, I, I did want to like even thinking about like you know Michael Jordan and the, the idea of of taking that same practice. Well, since you don't play professionally, do you still take that same aspect of like practice? very seriously when it comes to your work too as well of like like having to go to the gym every single day making sure your muscles are still you know where they need to be if you mm-hmm. like uh the uh the way i'm living right now is just like art is just around me right now like i wake up and then there's piece unfinished pieces over here another unfinished piece over there so it's like i'm always my brain is always working trying to you know put the puzzle pieces together to finish the piece you know Sure. So I'm always in here, you know, flexing that at least. I mean, I think that I think that's kind of weirdly how that line plays into sports and art stuff too, as well. For me personally, mm-hmm. too, stuff like where, you know, I can't I can't say that I'm not gonna ever be the one that says like, oh, I'm the best kid out doing the things that I'm doing. But at the mm-hmm. same time, I'm putting in that work, you know. Like, yeah, facts, facts. The work doesn't end, you know. Oh yeah. I'm, it's never going to be a time where I say I, I'm not putting in that work. So you know I'm putting in that work. Sure, because you can look at it in detail. You can see the, mm-hmm. the, the acumen of like uh, of, of your work and the way that you handle your line weights and all that kind of stuff with things. Oh, uh, thank you, Ken. No, of course, of course. Uh, I mean, it's all about giving y'all y'all flowers while y'all here. <laughs> um, Thanks, bro. So I think Jill did put something in. Does I have a question? What five years from now, uh, what do you want your work to be doing uh, in the black community? In five what do years, I want? Yeah. Like, what do you in want? Five years from now. Uh, um, uplifting them for real. Like, uh, one of my mottos is stacking paper with my neighbors, yeah. which is a. Uh, which is the motto, it's like, if I make money, like, I'm definitely, uh, like, like Cam putting me on right now, I'm definitely going to put Cam on, bro, because, you know, that's my neighbor, my neighbor, so, you know, uh, like, all my boys, bro, like, wait to the wait, man, <laughs> we say, but, but that even extends to, like, the community, too, like, I, I just don't want to, like, especially uh, teachers, bro, like, with with the brand I wanted to push, I wanted to be able to just pay teachers, bro. Like 
just give them money, bro. Like, I don't, I don't care for what. Like, you can use it for, to improve your classroom or anything, bro. Like, that's that's in the works, though. Yeah. No, I, I, I think that's the, another thing that makes Birmingham so special is it, it is that family. Like, because we all know what it is to live in Birmingham and the, and the vibe of that place, it, it builds. And again, we're all from the South, so, like, Oh yeah. Inherently, the idea of family or familial ties that you have with people from that city is is, is deep. It's deeper than most yeah. other connections that I have from other people from different other places. Like, I mean, St. Louis just has its own thing, but it doesn't feel like Birmingham. You know what I mean? Like that, mm-hmm. that camaraderie in which we have as a as, as a city, but then as a state, you know, you can't you can't get that from many places. Um, mm-hmm. Which I which Down I down south. No, exactly. But it's like, but, but yeah, that's right. It's like, we, we, I think it was like, I understood, like, we didn't say this, but like, that was always our intention of like, as creators to make sure that any way we can plug anybody else in to whatever we're doing, or like supporting them in any other way, we would do that. Like, no question. Mm -hmm. There was no debate to that degree. It was just, we just did it. And I don't know. I don't know if that's just a thing of being from Birmingham or what, but that was just a, uh, like I said, uh, understood uh, between everybody that we work with. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so I think we have about eight minutes left. Uh, is there anything that you would like to plug uh, at all, Daniel? Uh, I think we plugged everything I would like to plug for real. We we got a little ill status plug. Um we we did we did the four strikes plug. We did the Cameron Cameron Greater Goat plug. Uh I think that's about it, my guy. Okay. Um I'm trying to think if I have anything. Um first off, I just wanna thank you for being here and to sharing your time with me and uh to you you know and, and thank you Yolanda Sanders for uh helping out with this particular program uh yeah no man you, you did a, a fantastic job of mm. really setting the tone for what I wanted this season to be and I really appreciate that thank uh, you man I was no, kind of nervous out here why are you nervous this is the first time I ever took over somebody else's page man like you know no, nah, man, like you could have did, you could have did no wrong, man. Anything goes on that page, and you handled it with with as, as much candor as possible, and it was it was beautiful, man. Like, I'm just happy that I'm able to provide you with a space to where you can show your work, because I think, um, yeah, because your your page is on private, so most people can't even see it. But <laughs> it's, like, not, it's not on private anymore, man. We we, not, we talked about not, that. No, I, I don't think so. so. I might, <laughs> I might be. Like, Plug, plug your plug your Instagram See too. What? Plug your Instagram too. What while you're at? Uh, Instagram is the will underscore summer, d a w i l l underscore s a m a. Okay. Uh, yeah, I want everybody to go look at his work. His work is incredible. Um, again, uh, ask him to thank be you. If if that was not the standard, I have standards, and I'm not gonna allow anybody on this platform that has any lower standards than what I have for myself. So um, now again, Daniel, thank you for, for being you, for being my boy. And yes, sir. For always holding holding it down. Yes, uh, sir. For Birmingham and, uh, and yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I think, I think, I think, uh, wait, I know thank it's you. probably like five, five more minutes left unless unless there's any i'm gonna check the chat one more time before before but um, so ken what's going on with you man what's going on in your life you got five minutes let me interview you right quick no uh <laughs> i'm not yeah i'm not things are great uh i'm just working on trying to get this thing passed in uh at city council meeting at- uh i saw that man he's looking like black mane up there bro <laughs> I appreciate it. You, I'm gonna have to get a screen cap for that, bro. Nate's drawing. Cam is black man. No, for sure. Like, no, like <laughs> it was, it was, uh, it was a weird. Um, I, I already know, man. <laughs> you I, all black too, bro. 
Oh yeah, no, for sure. All black everything, bro. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know that. You know that that because that was the first city city council meeting I've ever been to in my life. So uh, like, I imagine so, bro. It's it's just weird to to be in that space, especially a space where well, there was only like two black individuals there to begin with. Me, yeah. my, myself, and one of the council members, and so you know, I, and that's somewhat one of the pitfalls of like doing what we're doing is like or doing what I'm trying to do is like it's hard to tell tell or, or it's hard to emphasize the importance of black work and black uh black thought in a predominant yeah. space yeah. Uh, especially when when you and, and yourself don't aren't aren't black to begin with and so mm -hmm. i think that's the hardest part and i was telling you off camera like that's the hardest part for me is like to show to 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 show them the fallacies in which in which uh i've experienced within this city and um to show them the importance of this said work and what it could actually mean to the, the city itself um okay. But I'm I'm hoping to bring one of the I'm gonna start up here first because you gotta take care of the place you gotta take care of your home backyard or whatever your home. But I'm gonna try mm -hmm. to bring I'm gonna try to bring one of these to Birmingham too for sure. Let's do it. No, so it's gonna be incredible, absolutely incredible. Facts. Um, Facts. But um, yeah, we got three minutes left, um, so we can we can we can we can kind of. Uh, we can shut it down early unless you got any if you if you have anything that else you want to talk about that I missed or hmm. I think we got it all, sir. Nah. Well Dan, it was a pleasure. Oh, always. Uh, always, Ken. To have you here. Um, and I want to thank everybody who came to the to the meeting uh today and listened to this. Uh, interview. Mm -hmm. The interview will hopefully be up soon on the uh, Buxton Initiative YouTube page. Um, so that's where I'll be archiving. And if you missed last season, I've already started archiving. All of those are already up on that page too. Um, and other platforms. And so if you want to get the, if you look on my, uh, if you go to my Instagram page and go to the link tree, you'll see um, uh, that YouTube channel on um, my link tree. So go check, everyone go check that out. Go check out, uh, actually, uh, Dr. Yolanda Sanders was actually a part of that first season. Um, and so, yeah, as soon as we uh, get those up, I'll let everyone know when his interview will be up on that page. Daniel, thank you again for- Thank you, uh, Cam. This, for this. But it's uh the goat. But um well uh without further well I think that would be it. Um uh Yolanda, uh do you have any oh, or anything? Well like, thank you both. Um it was uh a thought provoking discussion and it was wonderful to uh, hear the two of you because you can tell the closeness between the two of you as um, black men supporting you know your work and your passion um, and so that was absolutely lovely um, to hear and um, very talented both of you so I have um, some other ideas for collaboration that came to mind during the, um, okay your discussion so. <laughs> uh, all right um i guess uh, all right i guess well this is this is goodbye everybody um and i will i will hopefully see all of you soon uh and yeah till next month i'm excited uh oh yeah next month gonna be lit lake showers <laughs> it's, it's happening uh, yeah it's gonna be all right. Well, thank y'all. Thank everybody. Thank and, you. Thank uh, you, Cam. Y'all take care for sure.